Beautiful, thank you, Ronnie. <clears throat> Ave Maria was my mother's favorite hymn. I honor her today. She would have been 100 years old in, on September 10th. She used to make rosary beads for the missions and also made one for me. I remember the nights we all used to say the rosary together as a family. As an interfaith hospice chaplain, I support many faith traditions. To those patients and families who find peace in praying the Hail Mary, we will recite together. I may also bring a pair of rosary beads for the patient to hold. Rituals are comforting. Please join me in the ritual of our opening prayer. Nurturing God. May your spirit who filled Mary with light and empowered her prophetic voice of the poor and marginalized inspire us with the poor to speak out and act out against injustices in the world. May we reach out to offer comfort, peace, hope, and love to those who are suffering. We especially to say praise for the victims and survivors of Hurricane Dorian and all those coming to their aid. May the words in my mouth and the feelings in all our hearts fill this place with your unconditional love. For all you former Catholics out there, you may remember that today, September 8th, is Mary, the mother of Jesus, birthday. Hence my sermon title. Oh yes, and for my cross. <laughs> of course. Uh, so, actually, it's in a Downton Abbey bag. This thing is coming, right? This movie is coming. So, I have here first a license plate. All right? It's the Marineer. My name is a form of Mary. Some of you may know that I am a twin. We were born within the Marian year. 1953 to 1954. I know you wouldn't have guessed, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Uh, so my mother and father said it was such a joy to have twins, so we were named Joy and Marion. Do we have any other Marys out there? Oh, come Be on. Be more specific. <laughs> oh, come on. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Yes, I promise to have you all be proud Marys by the end of the show. Okay? <laughs> Something about Mary. Mary, or Miriam of Nazareth, also known as Theotokos, the God-bearer, is the most celebrated female religious figure in the Christian tradition. <laughs> Mary has been painted and sculpted, interpreted and explained, imagined and rejected, loved and honored in many ways. Mary was an Aramaic-speaking Galilean, a first-century humble Jewish woman of faith who responded with her whole heart to the Spirit. Galilee was an agrarian society. The village was part of an occupied state under the power of imperial Rome. Mary's village family was of the artisan class. During this period, Galilean villagers were triply taxed. Her life was lived out in an economically poor, politically oppressed Jewish peasant culture. Something about Mary. Mary's faith-filled partnership with God in the work of liberation is underscored in her prayer, the Magnificat, which was read today. By whom? And it is the most said of words spoken by any woman in all of the New Testament. Mary, at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, is pregnant with Jesus and visiting Elizabeth. She sings the Magnificat. I'll read it today. It is a Thanksgiving psalm and has two parts. The first praises God's mercy to Mary, 
And the second reflects God's victorious deeds for the oppressed. The two parts are connected by a sense of God's faithful compassion. We can hear a blessing in this canticle today. Mary rejoices over what the angel Gabriel told her. She magnifies God, for God is about to establish justice by ushering in the kingdom of Israel, especially the poor have yearned for. This song is not the gentle, tender Mary who we see in paintings and sculptures. This is the proud, passionate, enthusiastic Mary who speaks with prophetic authority, a liberating, revolutionary hymn. It has been said that the Magnificat is an anthem of fierce hope and counter-cultural resistance to oppression. Luke depicts Mary as a spokeswoman for God's redemptive justice. Elizabeth A. Johnson, Roman Catholic feminist theologian and member of the Sisters of St. Joseph. No, I always wanted to be a nun. I think it was because of the convent. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Elizabeth <coughs> reflects on the Magnificat. She said, this great prayer is a revolutionary song of salvation and places Mary in solidarity with the project of the coming reign of God. She says to relate to Miriam of Nazareth as a partner in hope in the company of all the great women and men of faith who have gone before us, to be encouraged by her mothering of God, to bring God to birth in our own world, to reclaim the power of her dangerous memories by the flourishing of suffering people, and to draw on her energy of her memories for a deeper relationship with the living God and a stronger care for the world. Mary, the friend of God and the prophet, inspired the lives of men and women alike. Church, these are empowering words for us today, amen? amen. Something about Mary. The maternal birthing and caring metaphors, which the Hebrew scriptures used to describe God's love for God's people, have been carried forward through the figure of Mary. From male-dominated imagery of God to re-imaging God in female symbols. Elizabeth Johnson reminds us that all language about God is indirect or symbolic. Words about God, while true, nevertheless, are not to be taken literally. They point us in the direction of the divine ministry in whose life we participate. God is the mother of mercy, who has compassionate womb love for all her children, she says. Mary is brimming over with gentleness, loving kindness and forgiveness, lavishing love. God is love. Powerful imagery, don't you agree? The inclusive language guidelines of metropolitan community churches include the following beliefs. Since its founding in 1968, Metropolitan Community Churches has sought to recognize our limited understanding of God and faith and to expand Christian community. Language has always been a critical part of making the circle wider because language shapes value and meaning. We pray, God of many names, mystery beyond our name. Our God is bigger. For us, they say the use of inclusive language furthers the aim of metropolitan community churches to reflect that the full range of people is created in God's image and in community life, as well as to speak to and about all people in ways that show respect and honor human dignity and worth. It allows for broader frameworks to understand God beyond those based on limited human qualities and theological beliefs. And the guidelines go on to state, as we discuss 
the human and divine and gender expansive ways, we recognize the inherent, often subconscious ways that masculinity has been privileged. Honor the potential and the equality of women and other non-masculine genders and notice and celebrate the diversity of gender, including non-binary gender, that engenders other than male or female. God is often referred exclusively as male, and yet God is all genders and all people are created in God's image, amen? amen. We can reflect this by using terms and pronouns that are feminine and gender neutral how liberating and affirming. In continuing, they say, sometimes in our efforts to be inclusive, we will use both a male and female term for God. For example, by saying, mother, father, God. To fully represent all genders in the spectrum, we might also include non-binary terms, parent God, nurturing God, source of life, and my favorite, divine presence. Our congregations are filled with men, women, trans folks, and people who are non-binary. It is critical that we have an understanding of the breadth and range of gender. We can help more people feel included and welcomed in church life by using words to describe our congregation that reflect many varieties of gender. Brothers and sisters and siblings men and women and transgender and non-binary people. Church, the divine image and likeness of God is male, is female, is transgender, is gender non-conforming, non-binary. How liberating and affirming. Amen. Amen. Something about Mary. Mary had human struggle and real suffering in her life. Can I have the next picture? Well, next picture. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Writer Joy McDougall says, Mary appears as a powerful testimony to God's steadfast friendship with the whole of humanity and for a prophetic source of hope for those struggling. Elizabeth Johnson said, Mary's song of God's victory over those who dominate others rings with us today in support for persons in their struggle against sexism, racism, classism, heterosexism, and all other demeaning injustice. Characteristics of mothering, compassion, and presence, particular in the historical experience of Mary, is seen in the characters of the TV series Pose. Pose. The series is set in New York City during the 1980s and 90s and explores the lives, lives of queer people of color, especially black transgender women who are involved with the underground ball scene. <laughs> it depicts transgender people with human struggle and real suffering. It depicts their social world as marked by social disruption, violence, and exploitation. Blanco Rodriguez and Vangelista, played by actor MJ Rodriguez, who is also trans, is a woman who forms her own house, the house of Evangelista. As a house mother, she guards over her house children, Damon, Angel, and Poppy. Even in the face of oppression during the AIDS epidemic, it said Blanca is looking forward and figuring out how her family can succeed. She's always her children's biggest cheerleader. The show focuses on her gathering children who will compete in the ballroom scene with her. She builds people up. She has high standards for her friends and family. At one of the show's famed balls that was celebrating Mother of the Year, a title she held the previous year, all gathered around her. They called her caring, loving, affirming, and 
inspiring something about Mary. Damon says to Blanca, you taught me everything I know. There are so many more Damons in the world that need the same. Your work is not done yet. My siblings, our work is not done yet. We need to be just as proud, just as seeking, loving Marys. Angel says, as a transgender woman of color says, I earned every, I learned very early not to show people who I really am. I learned very early not to show people who I really am. How many of us grew up or are now not showing people who they really are? You know, I never minded being called a tomboy or a jock. Right? Actually, thought it pretty cool that I could play softball and basketball with the guys and even be better than some of them. Yes, we know. <laughs> it is true, it is true. This is true, this is true. But it was much more difficult for me to come out as a lesbian. It took many years and an addiction to alcohol. The message I heard at the church I belonged to were so negative. It weighed on me that God didn't or couldn't love someone like me. But here is my update. I am 33 years in recovery. <laughs> a church who gives me positive messages and has even ordained me. <laughs> this stole was given to me by a friend, Laura, who introduced me to the uh, rooms of AA and she gave it to me for my ordination. See, everything's just connected. I believe that God loves me with all my heart, and that I am God's miracle and not God's mistake, and so are you. Yes, yes, yes. claim it, claim it. Say, we are God's miracle, not God's mistake. We are God's miracle, not God's mistake. In the show, Ricky and Pray Tell proclaim, it is time to embrace all of who you are, butch and femme. Now that would have been a positive message for me. And they also said, it takes guts to step out of your comfort zone. We should do it more. If we did, it would be a better world. Amen. Yes, profound words. Church, we must step out of our comfort zone and show up for our transgender siblings. We need to make a better world. Amen? Amen. Globe. This will be our globe. It's a dance ball and a globe. Something about Mary. Mary's social world was marked by social disruption, violence, and exploitation. The Human Rights Campaign reports that in 2018, advocates tracked at least 26 deaths of transgender people in the US due to fatal violence, the majority of whom were transgender women of color. These victims were killed by acquaintances, partners, and strangers some of whom have been arrested and charged, while others have yet to be identified. Some of these cases involve clear anti-transgender bias. In others, victims' transgender status may have put them at risk in other ways, such as forcing them into unemployment, poverty, homelessness, and or survival sex work. Fatal violence disproportionately affects gender, transgender women of color. Fatal violence. This proportionately affects transgender women of color. In the US in 2019, at least 18 transgender people have been fatally shot or killed by other violent means. 17 were transgender women of color and one a transgender man. I speak their names and ages now, aloud in this sacred, loving space, for they are, are a cloud of witnesses and their lives matter. Dana Martin, 31, 
Jazeline Ware, 8 Ashanti Carmen, 27. Claire Legato, 21. Malaysia Booker, 23. Michelle Tamika Washington, 40. Paris Cameron, 20. Chanel Lindsay, 26. Chanel Gerlock, 23. Zoe Spears, 23. Brooklyn Lindsay, 32. Denali Berry Stuckey, 29. Kiki Controy, 21. Pebbles with Dime Dime Doe, 24. Tracy Single, 22. And added this past week. B. Love, 21. And Bailey Reed, 17. And Jordan Copper, 22, with the trans man killed in the mass casualty in Dayton, Ohio, on August 4th. Something about Authors have spoken about Mary as a rebel, a revolutionary, a social protester. We are called to be proud, justice-loving Marys. The National Trans Visibility March will be held September 28th in Washington, D.C. MCC and the Global Justice Institute are leading our MCC response and participation as faith leaders in this event. In their call to action, they state, we believe and agree with the other organizing faith leaders that trans visibility is critically important right now as we continue to see human and civil rights protections roll back day by day. In the process, humanity is denied and sacredness ignored. We must not and cannot be silent. How can you and I participate? by showing solidarity and support and visibly stepping out in a unifying voice, joining the March for Justice and Equality as siblings in the family of God. They suggest for us to either, one, join the National Trans Visibility March in Washington, D.C. on September 28th and march with MCC Global Justice Institute. Institute. Or two, participate in the virtual march that will be online. Three, connect with your community leaders and coordinate a local event. Or four, host a trans visibility workshop, service, or dedicate a moment that raises awareness and calls others to stand with transgender, non-conforming, non-binary people. In Luke's Gospel, Mary is depicted as a marginalized female villager, the one who hears the word of God and carries it out. Without hesitation, Mary celebrated the wonderful things God was doing in and through her, calling her to participate in this great work of redemption. Scott McKnight, professor of religious studies in Chicago said, the real Mary changed the world by surrendering to the angel Gabriel with three words, may it be. This is the real Mary, and we need to reclaim her voice as our own. My siblings, God takes a good look at you and me and says, I love you with an everlasting love. Believe that the powerful, living, holy God is doing great things in and through us and is calling us to participate in the great work of redemption, in justice, love work, and in strong caring for the world. <coughs> Trans visibility is critically important. Humanity must not be denied nor sacredness ignored. We will not be silenced. Let's step out of our comfort zones and be proud, justice-loving Marys, living our lives bursting with God news and dancing the song of our parents' God. May it be. Amen. Amen.